All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym, and the QBO Gym is a set of exercises that help simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. And every single month, we have it broken down into four different categories, and within each category is a set of exercises for you to complete. So today we are gonna be working in the June cardio section, which focuses on periodic inventory. At the top here, we have a video. It talks about what's going on in Craig's world that month. He is our fictitious business owner. Um, a little bit further down is a quiz that relates to that video. And then further down are a couple of exercises uh, within that section. So today we are going to be practicing recording purchases and sales. So go ahead and click on that. Um, if you have not got done the first exercise in this section, you need to go back and do that one first and then stay in the same sample company session that you did that one in for this exercise as they continue to build on each other as we go. So our scenario today is Craig wants to order a bunch of inventory from Mahoney Mugs, but he wasn't, he's not sure whether those items are in stock. To make a formal request for that inventory, he asks you to create a purchase order to send to Mahoney requesting those items. Craig has made a number of sales to various customers as well and has some information to record or to help you record those. So let's start with purchase order and bill. Um, keep in mind that a purchase order isn't exactly the same as an expense or even a bill. Purchase orders are non-posting transactions, which means that they don't actually record an actual change in the situation of the business. In the case of a PO, um, all we're gonna be doing is recording Craig's intent to purchase inventory from Mahoney Mugs. So let's get started on how to do that. First thing you wanna do is you wanna click on the plus new button and then purchase order. Um, here I am in the sample company. This is the uh, page that I left off of in the last video. This is after, um, after I had grouped together all of the uh, products that we had imported. So we are gonna go ahead and get started with the plus new button. Under vendors, you're gonna click on purchase order. Steps two and three um, to complete it. So in the vendor field, we are going to select Mahoney Mugs. So start typing that in and it'll uh, populate. Um, we are gonna leave the ship to and ship via uh, blank for right now because we're not really sure where Craig has wants to have these items shipped or any kind of special instructions. So we're just gonna leave it as is. In the item details grid on line one in the product service field, we are gonna select bird bath rubber duck and enter the quantity, which is 120. So the items detail, and then I'm going to type in rubber duck. There it is. And we said that the quantity was 120. I'm gonna tab over and QBO has made that calculation. And then on line two, in the same place, the product and service field, we're gonna look for the RC Mini lawnmower and the quantity is six. So clicking into this, I'm gonna do mini lawnmower. And we said that the total was six. Just tab that over, now everything's been calculated. Um, and these are the items that, um, again, Craig is requesting from Mahoney. So we have 126, and you're good. Okay, so now we are just gonna save and close that. So the um, green button down here below. And the purchase order has been saved. Mahoney Mugs is happy to sell Craig some more inventory on credit, but unfortunately they don't have all of the RC lawnmowers that he wants right now. Since he ordered so many ducks though, they've given him a very small discount off of his list price or off their list price. Uh, Craig has provided you with the bill Mahoney sent and his inventory is delivered shortly there afterward. In QBO, we can use the purchase order. We just 
created to fill in the bill from Vahoni. So let's find it. First, you're gonna go on the left nav bar and you're gonna click on expenses, filter it out, and then click on the type, uh, in the type field, it's purchase order, and then click apply. Okay, so here we go. Here is the left nav bar. In expenses, you're just gonna click on expenses. Here where it says filter, you're gonna do all transactions to purchase order, and then go ahead and click on the green apply button, and you will see the existing purchasing orders, including the one that we just did on this list. So now we need to click on the arrow in the action column and copy it to a bill. So here is the one that we just did, the arrow right here, and just do copy to bill which is great. Now we have it all set up. We have a lot of information already in here. It'll make our lives a lot easier in this last part. Um, keep in mind that the bill links to the purchase order in the top left and is pre-populated with Mahoney mugs as the vendor, as I just mentioned. And with item details, uh, line one and two that we entered. Since this data isn't a match for the actual bill we received though, we'll have to make some updates. Remember, we aren't making any changes to the purchase order itself. It's just that Craig's request didn't change. Mahoney was the one that wasn't able to fulfill it as he expected. So that's why the bill does not match what the purchase order was. So go ahead, we're going to go ahead and update the bill form. In the terms field, we're going to select net 15. So in the terms, net 15, and this updates the due date um, 15 days out from today. Um, Mahoney didn't provide a control number for their invoice. So in the bill number field, we're just going to enter the date it was issue, issued. So we'll just say that it was today. Okay, and then um, in the rubber duck field, we need to enter the rate as $1.90 because remember they gave him a very small discount off of their list price. So we're gonna scroll down and here are the items that were on the purchase order. In the rate, you're just gonna click into it and change this to 1.90 to indicate $1.90. And when you tab over, you will see that the calculation has been made for us. And then um, in the lawnmower quantity field, we are going to enter five because they only had five that they were able to give him. So tab that over and now that adjustment has been made. And then we're just gonna click on the arrow to save and close. All right, so here's the arrow down here. Just go ahead and click on that and save and close. And the bill has been saved. All right, let's change gears a little bit and focus on some sales. Craig went to a bunch of farmer's markets to sell his merchandise and promote the services that his company offers. He gives you a tally of what he sold and the cash he collected over the course of the past few weekends. He deposited the cash directly into the bank on his way home. Okay, so let's get a get going on this. Since he collected payment for all the sales and checks and cash, um, they that's how they were collected, excuse me. The simplest way to do that is just record a bunch of sales like this um, using a sales receipt. So we are going to click on the plus new button and then sales receipt. So here's the plus sales or a plus new button. Under customers, you're gonna select sales receipt and then this appears. Um, and then in the customer field, we're going to add a new, and you will see why in a second. So go ahead and click into it, and then the plus add new button. And now we are going to label the customer field market customers, and then save. And the reason we're doing that is because we're not actually able to know the name of um, market customers, is that what I said? Yes, um, we're not able to know the names of every single customer, but we can group everybody together because it's through cash and check. And so we're just gonna make kind of a bucket overview of um, all the customers uh, for the, the sales over those weekends. So go ahead and click the green save button. And then we're gonna complete the rest of the sales receipt form. So in the payment method field, we're gonna select cash which is down here. 
And you will notice that it deposits to the undeposited funds. Remember, keep in mind, undeposited funds is a holding account until you make the deposit for any kind of cash and checks. The line one, the product and service, we're going to select bad birth, bad birth, bad birth, bird, bath, <laughs> rubber duck, and set the quantity as 96. So bird, bath, rubber duck, and then we said that the quantity was 96. We're just going to tab that over. And then the RC Mini Lawnmower, um, we are going to put that in the product and service field and then set the quantity to three. So I'm just gonna type in mini lawnmower and we said three, tab that over. Okay, and now there's the new calculation for the two items or the two types of items. And then we're just gonna click on the arrow um, to once again, save and close. So down here, click on this arrow and click save and close. And the sales receipt has been saved. All right, let's make a uh, work on the bank deposit. Craig collected a total of $1,550 at the market and deposited into the business bank account. This could be because the customers put money in a tip jar or they said just keep the change or simply accidentally overpaid. Since that's significantly more than the expected sales price of the items, we're gonna make up the difference using one of the fields in the deposit form. So we are going to start this by clicking on the plus new button and then bank deposit. That plus new button is gonna be your best friend. <laughs> um, under the other category, go ahead and click on bank deposit. And then in the account field, we're gonna select checking. And then next to the market customers uh, transaction for the 1354.89, um, that's the sales receipt we just completed, we're gonna check that box. Okay, so we have the account as checking and then this box right here next to market customers, this is what we're depositing. Go ahead and click on that box. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. In the add funds to this deposit section under the receive form, select market customers in the account field, then select retail sales income and then under the payment method is going to be cash. So it's start typing in market or market customers. And then here we said it was retail sales income. And then our method, we are selecting cash. Now in the amount field, we need to make an equation. Uh, $1,550, which is what the total amount was that Craig had collected, minus $1,354.89, which is the total of the sales. That's what was on the sales receipt. Um, QBO will do that math for you. Um, so when you click out of that field, you'll see that it is making a change. Um, and then you'll note that the uh, total will change as well. So let me go into here. So $1,550 minus the, it's this one right here, $1,354.89. If you tab over, you will see it has now calculated it to $195.11. And the total now for the deposit is exactly what Craig has. Kind of nifty, right? Um, so you're just going to click on the green arrow next to the save and new button and just save and close, which is down here. Click on the button, save and close. And the bank deposit has been saved. All right, our last one here is sales on credit. So Amy's Bird Sanctuary wants to buy a dozen bird bath rubber ducks to decorate their habitats. Craig agrees to credit terms of net 10 and delivers the ducks right away. So let's see how we record it. First, we are going to, of course, click on the plus new button and then um, invoice. So plus new, under customers, select invoice. Um, in the customer field, we are going to select Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So Amy's Bird Sanctuary right there. 
And you will see this little pop up here. This is just like an outstanding bill that is associated with Amy. This is called, I believe, the, the register or the cash register. Um, for right now, we are just going to ignore it. Um, we don't need to worry about it for the purposes of this exercise. And actually, if you want to close it out, there's this little arrow here. Just go ahead that just collapses it so it's not on your screen anymore. In the terms field, we are going to select net 10. So here, and that's net 30 because that's what we usually have for Amy's Sanctuary. So um, once again, you can have it set up in the customer profile as like what their default is. And then for any transaction, you can go ahead and change the terms based off of whatever the need is at that time. Just kind of nifty. Um, okay, so on the first line for the product and service field, we're gonna select bird, bath, rubber, duck, and then we're gonna put in 12 because that's how many she is looking for. So bird, bath, rubber, duck. She wants a dozen of those, tab it over. And then we are simply just going to click on the arrow and save and close. Down here's the arrow. Go ahead and save and close. And that invoices has been saved. And that's just a couple of ways that you can uh, record purchases and sales. If you have any questions about the QBO Gym, just click on the link below in the description and be sure to leave this session of the sample company open. You will need it for the last exercise in the cardio section, which is all about recording other transactions. And I will see you in that final video.